Remember when Nip did that with it, that with that album? He came out with a mixtape. Yeah, it was like a thousand dollars. Yeah, it was like a thousand dollars something, yeah, something yeah, like that. that was smart. That was smart. And I think and Jigga bought like like a like a hundred copies. Hundred copies. Yeah, yeah, gave yeah, him ten racks. Yeah, 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 and that yeah. was smart. And I think like he realized that marketing and strategy brand, man, because us as people and then a lot of other people they recognize value you know what i'm saying yeah. and so when you put a price on value sometimes there's no limit for people man people spend whatever they want i spent 1200 on jeans motherfuckers yeah. look at me crazy you know what i'm saying yeah right me <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying i done spent 900 on jeans 1200 on shoes so people look at me crazy but it's just the value you know what i'm saying uh, goddamn, uh, Patrice O'Neal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he yeah. was on a radio station once, and, and there was this white guy that was like, How come you spend like, <coughs> like, a, like $500 on shoes and this and that? And he was like, Man, some white guy out there with a life size statue of yeah, uh, yeah, Batman yeah. for, for $3,000. A million dollars. On, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just on the goofy shit. Yeah. Like, it, what I do is, yeah. is my version of the right. same thing anybody right. else is doing. Right. And I think I justified like every everybody else, like, you treat yourself to what you want. I don't have no kids, so um, that's, yeah. like, that's my kid. Them my kids, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but, but, like, um, I also understand value too, you know what I'm saying? So, going other places and seeing people without things, I understand, like, that shit don't mean nothing, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's just, just like when the Jordans came out, like, that shit didn't mean nothing. It was just that we was from Chicago, it was a hot shoot, everybody wanted it. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah, you yeah. still had your guys walking. Adidas, right. you know what I'm saying? Brooks, uh, Tim, mm -hmm. British Knights, British Knights, <laughs> Puma, <laughs> Puma. What? You know, BK, you had your guys rocking. I had the double up. laces in my BK. You couldn't tell me nothing. They don't know nothing about that one. Nah, they don't know nothing about the kangaroos <laughs> with the pouch. Ooh, yeah, yeah I'll take it all the way back. <laughs> all to pay you to wear those. Yeah, kangaroos. Yeah, kangaroos. walk to pay you to wear them. Mike, 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 you. Straight from the south side. Mike, 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 Mike. Uh, I'm just so happy to be here right now. Real Rap Podcast. 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 We back with another episode of Real Rap Podcast. Make sure you're hitting that like, share, subscribe. We are here with some very special guests. This is episode 18. To my right, I had a one and only Birdie G. To my left, I got his man, 50 Grand. Craig, like Craig, is it just Craig on the street? Craig, killer, Craig, killer, killer. Oh, killer, we get into that. We get into that. Craig, do me a favor, my guy. Go ahead and let these people know uh, uh, how long you been in uh, Chicago. Where you from? What you got going on out here, sir? Well, you know, I'm born and raised in Chicago. You know, what I'm saying, been here since day one. You know, uh, I'm just rocking out, my guy Birdie G. You know, what I'm saying, I got a clothing line. You know, what I'm saying, FDKZ. All right, you know yeah, saying? we got to get to the heart of this. So we're oh, get we, we getting to my man, yeah. but go ahead. We're F gonna get to that. You know FDKZ, saying, go ahead, let yeah, him know what it means. I'm here. All right, well, you, you gonna tell the people what we got going on with the go? Yeah, go oh, ahead, put we, it oh, out, man. Y'all ain't ready yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna get to that. <laughs> we you know what I'm saying? Because it's, 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 it's a little unadulterated. Hey, stop doing your math. Yeah. Use your imagination at home. Y'all already know. You know what I'm saying? So go get it twisted. What's understood ain't got to be explained. Hey, with that to my right. I got the one and only Birdie G, my guy. Go ahead and let these people know uh, uh, where you from, how long you been in the game, what you got going on out here, man. Man, what's popping? I'm Birdie G from the south side of Chicago, yo, mean ass comic. If you do not <laughs> laugh, I will stick your ass up in the parking lot for real. <laughs> you feel me? That's me, though. You know what I'm saying? I come from the streets. Um, made a good turn in life. I'm from here. I'm a, com I'm a comedian, of course. Uh, I also own a few businesses. Uh, I'm partnering with my man. My man got the FDKZ brand going crazy. So you see, we rocking that. Mm -hmm. We supporting that. That's a black brand in the city. I got my homie with me. So we could just kind of chop it up and support my man on the Real Rap Podcast. We really appreciate y'all. This is love. Effing with us. You, you know, smell me. You feel? This is love, man. I'm so you happy feel? to have y'all guys here. And then, and then me and you, I mean, we kind of, uh, I think, what's it going on? Like a year and yeah, some change? Yeah, close to a year. Yeah, years, yeah, man. yeah. Yeah, it's I close. Done, it's I done close. bumped into you on on the comedy scene. Then we did, <laughs> we did a skit did, together. Yeah, we did the worst yeah. motherfucking movie ever. <laughs> it's gotta, it's be. gotta be the worst movie ever, bro. <laughs> That's buried. It's like somewhere on the internet to never yeah, like, be found. It was like three or four characters and a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> and I guarantee you the shoe was the best motherfucking thing in the picture. Damn. Like, it was a Jordan shoe, so that's why it was the best. Was. It was terrible. <laughs> but yeah, man, Mike, uh, you know, on some real shit, like, um, as me coming onto the comic scene, you know, I, 
mm. kind of like try to feel my way and go to some different shows and, and try to meet a lot of different people. And Mike was one of the first ones that, that I met. He don't know that, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So as I started to grow and, you know, do my shit and, and pop out, I always wanted to come back and support Mike and, and fuck with him because, you know, I won't say... You know, he he kind of gave me a tunnel vision of this shit, right? Like mm. I, I seen him doing it. You know what I'm saying? He funny. I, I I respected him. So, you know, from that, you know, I was all in. You know what I'm saying? And I'm a real dude, so I feel oh, you like book me. Yeah, book yeah. Book I feel like fun out, yeah, out yeah. Well, guess. that's just the realness, bro. Like I, you know, I I don't go off a of cap or none of that shit. I go off a of realness. So when you accepted that 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 intro and, and and gave me some game on the comedy and shit, I I just felt like I had to give it back and. That's what it's all about, just giving. You know what I'm saying? Now yeah. you was um uh we talked about it before, so I was in the Air Force for some time, and yes, then you also went to the Air Force. And normally, normally you don't end up seeing a lot of that uh from cats. Usually cats will hop over into the to the Nate, one of the other branches, man. But yeah, you, you know yeah. you kind of gotta you kind of had gotta have something going on with the ASVAB. That look, <laughs> yeah, from, yeah, from I'm, the air for yeah, so, yeah, yeah, what yeah. What was sure. that like? I'm a street smart nigga. You feel me? Like, <laughs> like, like, I ain't the smartest nigga. You know what I'm saying? But I, I work a lot of niggas. You feel me? Like yeah. that's that's my key. So, like, man, we always like Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and shit like that. But the Air Force chose me, bro. Like it wasn't like I made a choice. Like my score, they was like, bro, come on in here. We gonna work with you because mm. this is what we think you should do. So. At the time, of course, I thought that shit was terrible because I was young. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know any better. I didn't have a military background. Like my mom had to actually enlist me into the military, bro. Mm. So I was 17 when I went to basic training. So she okay. had to sign a paper for me to go. So I didn't. I didn't really understand it, but I appreciate it now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I appreciate it now. You know. So yeah, man, I went to that motherfucker and I was stationed at North Dakota. You know, I've been to Germany. Was that Minot? My, I know I was in Grand Forks. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been, uh, you know, what I'm saying I've been, um, I've been some everywhere, man. Mm. Uh, Panama, Germany, Frankfurt, uh, just some everywhere, man. Like the military took me to a lot of different places. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I, I enjoyed myself. Craig, uh, did you ever like? Do you remember like your first? Your first, like, did you ever start off with like a nine to five? Or you always been a, a hustler, <laughs> or like, what's the word? <laughs> no, you know, I do both sides. You know, so I'm an yeah. uh, intellectual thug. Okay. They call it, your type shit. And on the intellectual side, are you like, a, uh, I learn from what I see, or just show me how to do it once I figure it out? You reading books, you out here, like, you studying something else, or how, how you picking up the game? Just go as you see. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. Rock with it like that, but I got some knowledge with it. You know what I'm saying? What I'm trying to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But I just try to go with the flow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we trying to grind, man. Like, the, the goal in life is, man, to change, man. You know, like, everybody goes through a phase in their life. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I think it, the, the goal in life is to continue to elevate. You know what I'm saying? Where I started is not where I want to finish. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. So... The military was a good start, but it didn't continue to get great, you know, be great. You know what I'm saying? It got worse. And then from that worse, mm. now it's getting better again. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's always, and I always uplift my homie, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's 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 important to grow, bro. Like, it's important to elevate. Like, things started taking a turn for the worse while you was in the military or nah, after? Nah, so after I got out the military, you know what I'm saying, I went to college. Okay. So that's where things kind of like changed in my life. You feel me? Like, so I got out of the military and I went to college. Okay. And when I went to college, I had a blast and then I went to the penitentiary. You know okay. what I'm saying? So from college to the penitentiary, you know what I'm saying? From the military to college to the penitentiary okay. to opening your own business, you know what I'm saying? Being successful, getting back into the atmosphere, working, and just understanding that life is about your choices and your decisions, bro. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. So I just had to make some different choices and decisions. Did it make you stronger for having that experience going in, uh, going into the penitentiary as your outlook on life now? Because from, from what a lot of people say, and I think it's kind of understood, is that the penitentiary is a college. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Like well, You might not be learning, to, you know, depending on the courses you're taking in there. Yeah, you learning some shit in that motherfucker for real. You yeah. feel me? Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Me and my man, we, we we was down. So you learning some shit in there, but it definitely makes you stronger, but it can also be a breaking point for some people. You oh, know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you got people who've been to the joint a lot of times, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they can't get out of the phase of doing the same shit. So 
once you once you hit that college or the penitentiary, you should either get real good at what you're doing mm. or probably switch it up a little bit. You feel mm. me? You know what I'm saying? So if you don't do either or, you're gonna be back in that motherfucker. <laughs> not to um not to not to relive not to relive a painful part of your past. Your first day, you rolling up, you yeah. in the you in the bus, you about to pull in there, yeah, your yeah. first time going in. What's that? What's that? experience what's that process like what's going through your mind man it, it wasn't painful at all like i chose that life you know what i'm saying like that's the mm. life i chose so it wasn't painful it was just like man i always had a better plan for myself you know what mm. i'm saying like when you hustling bro like like we hustling now we don't foresee going to jail tomorrow right okay. because we hustling right so when you hustling you don't foresee that you just know it's a possibility and you just got to prepare yourself for that possibility you feel me mm. so i had always prepared myself for the possibility because i was in the streets i knew what it was you know what i'm saying mm. the military was an outlet for my parents to my mom for her to try to make it better for me but that wasn't my choice so yeah. so when i made my own decisions they was all bad you feel me so i knew that but i had choices you know what i'm saying so I was okay with it when I rolled up in that motherfucker. It was like, damn, you feel me? Like, this what it is. I ain't think I was gonna mm -hmm. be here. You know what I'm saying? But me being, a, you know, what I'm saying who I am. Like when I got in that motherfucker, it was like sad to say, like I was cool. You feel me? Like I, okay. I had no worries. You know what I'm saying? Like it was, it was on. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, what you man? been down before, uh, Craig? Yeah. What would what would be? I mean, it's kind of a wacky question, but if you would have gone back and been able to tell yourself something before you went in there, what would it be? Shit, don't do Outside it. Outside of don't get caught. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep running. <laughs> yeah, he was a running motherfucker. Yeah, you should have stopped. You should have stopped running. Man. I should have. I should have turned myself in. Yeah, he should have stopped running. Wow. Man. Okay. Because I turned myself in. It was some shit I did. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying. Is that um that, that like facing karma that wasn't that wasn't necessarily worth it? For what it ended up being, I mean, you already went through it now, but well, shit, everything I do is worth it. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you know what I'm saying. That's what gets you where you at. It's learning lessons. You know what yeah, saying? lessons. You know what I'm saying? But I, if I had to do it all over again, I'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> game, I'd game, do it game, game. I do it different. That's my. You know what I'm saying? Crazy, a little yeah, bit yeah. different. You know what I'm saying? Just a little bit different. Absolutely. Game, game. Absolutely. Now I see that, that I mean, even to this day right now, you travel constantly. Every time I see you on your socials, man, you here, there, you yeah. a little bit of everywhere. And then yeah. when you, you do the military thing, you gonna travel there regardless too. Um, what are you what are you picking up in your travels? What are you what is that changing about your worldview? Yeah, man, that's a good question. You know, so the the military with the traveling, it was force. So everything I did was according to them. So I really mm. I really didn't have anything but memories, right? Because those experiences was kind of like the experiences I kind of brought on myself, but not all of them were organic. You know what I'm How saying? How do you feel about the word patriotic? Oh, uh, I don't know. Like that's that, a tough one. Right? Yeah, that's a because tough one. What, that's a what, tough what one. Gets built around it. Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> tough. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of tough. Um, but yeah, just from traveling, so like I didn't, I didn't start traveling again until, of course, everything like subsided in my personal life while I was able to travel. At that point in my life, I was older, so then mm. I was able to enjoy the experiences of being in different states. You know, being in the Bahamas, you know, being on the Virgin mm. Islands, being in Puerto Rico, and just picking up different cultures and understanding. See, from Chicago, you know, a lot of times we are separated in Chicago. So, being oh. from Chicago, you know, you don't. You know, you don't wear red because they don't wear red on the next block, right? Right, right, So right. maybe you don't go out of town and wear red, right? Because you don't know no better. And, I, yeah. and you just have to understand that it's not like that everywhere. So being able to travel, exactly right. I've learned that, man, Chicago is great. I love my city, but it's just not the world. You feel me? So Oh, yeah. And you can get caught up in... I, I got a military background and traveled a whole bunch in my life. Yeah. And sometimes I'll be like over east, like, man, look, I'm traveling. Yeah, I'm in yeah. a whole different world right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, for I'm sure. Good. I'm good, bro. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'll be on South Shore like, man, what uh, What side of town you from, Craig? I'm from South Side, Inglewood. <laughs> Inglewood? Dirty, dirty. You know what I'm Inglewood. You know what I'm what's the difference? What's the difference between the Inglewood you grew up in and the Inglewood now? If there is one. Back <laughs> in the day, structure. Structure like the OGs. Yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Ain't none of that no more. You know what I'm saying? They, don't, they ain't listening. 
Mm, the but young cats ain't listening. But that's because they did it like this. You know what I'm saying? They, they they tried to cut the head off and thought the body would fall, but now the body running around like a wild chicken. It's that um, it's that what's that that thing from one of them Avenger movies where you cut the head off and two more grow. You cut them two off, right, four more grow, right, but right, they smaller. Right, right, right. And they ain't as smart as that first exactly, big head because they take it away from the big. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's dangerous. Dangerous. Man. And then, um, uh, uh, so growing up in England, so the biggest thing right now was just the structures missing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, man, I come from blocks and from the projects, you feel me? And so mm. it's just different, man. Like, that, that, the city has changed a lot, you know what I'm saying? But the biggest thing is there is no, no structure or guidance from, from nobody. So, you know, so. when you had a mob of 600 running <coughs> over against 600 or 600 against 1,200 different people, and you had mm-hmm. a few people kind of controlling them 600 against those 1,200. Well, now you got like one-on-ones, two-on-twos, mm-hmm. three-on-threes, one-on-one. So it's just different. It's a Grand Theft Auto world, And everybody man. got a gun. Yeah. It's a Grand Theft Auto world, man. Yeah. But, you know, it's just, you know what I'm saying? It's different. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't condone none of that fucking bullshit, though, just so you know, like, I'm with all the bullshit, but not that bullshit. Like, it's all about elevating. It's all about getting better. Mm-hmm. Do sure. something for yourself that's going to make yourself better than what the fuck you was yesterday, bro. Exactly. Whenever I catch myself giving advice to a young cat, I automatically flash back to a time somebody was older Hell than yeah. me trying to give me advice. And I was like, fuck you, old nigga. Fuck you, old nigga. Oh, goof ass out of you, old nigga. You just mad because you old. Yeah, and fuck man, you. Look, and back then, old in my mind was younger than I am now. Yeah, 30, yeah. 30, 30 yeah. is old, nigga. Yeah. When I was, what, 16, 30 was a whole cougar. Yeah, right yeah, now, yeah. I was trying to whoop. When I was 16, I was trying to whoop 30-year-old niggas. Mm. I was trying to beat their ass. Show the motherfuckers I wasn't mm. playing. <laughs> was that a... Um, now, like, so some people are naturally alphas, right? Some people have a, a history in their the background that turns them maybe colder colder in their veins yeah. than other people. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Is that is that born or bred like a certain kind of mentality? It's like, hey, I'm here. I'm the one pissing on the biggest tree. Go ahead. It, it, it is what you make it type. I think I think it's bred, bro. Like, I, my mom is strong. You feel me? Like, I come mm. from strong people. So, yeah, that shit bred in me. Like, I'm a, I'm a vampire dog. You feel me? Like, <laughs> I ain't, I ain't running it. from nothing. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you know, I'm making the right decisions, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, like, hell yeah, I've always been that way. Killer, tell you, like, I'm the smallest, biggest nigga you know, you feel me? Yeah, like, yeah really. <laughs> Is it? Your ass too. You know what I'm saying? So, it's, I've always been like that, you know what I'm saying? So, but, now but, 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 now but, 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 not, but not on no pissing on nobody type shit. Yeah. Just always kind of like, you know, not, not being afraid of who I am and, and being able to hold my own, you feel me? Yeah, exactly. Cuz I was about to I was about to ask you that so now that you're in business, there's a certain level of negotiation, a certain level of conversation that has to come, but you still have to be, I mean, business is vicious just cuz it ain't It's red the same blood, as the street. It's just, okay. It's the the only difference with business in the street is emotions. Mm. So like if you doing if you doing some shit with with in the street like People like they get emotional. You feel me? So they yeah. start doing emotional actions. You have to understand as a as a as a business as a person that you don't involve your emotions in, into business, and then you know you you're able to make a sound decision. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you don't get caught up into the fact of this and that. You, you you it's business. You know what I'm saying? And so when you can understand business and not get emotional, you you own something, bro. Is this a um? Is this a publicly discussed business? Yeah, for sure, for sure, what you got for sure, going on, brother? for sure. Yeah, so <laughs> for sure. So I, I'm a private contractor. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, I run a, I run two distri- distribution businesses with trucks. So I got some contracts Ooh. going on. Yeah, yeah. So I've been doing good, man. I've been doing this for like four or five years. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's been that's been doing well for me. So light marketing, no really, no no pressure. Just me going out getting the contracts. Yeah, it's just business, man. Like everything is about elevating, bro. Like yeah. everything is. How you can make yourself better than the next day. Now, uh, I'm glad I have you here. And now that I know that part of your business. So, is there a conversation amongst the, the industry? Because they got cars that drive themselves now, right? Yeah, for and sure. And in my mind, if you just fast forward however many years, like, if I own Trucks R Us, you know, the big deal trucking company, I'm yeah. be like, well, all right. 
Do I pay this person to ask to stop pee? Do this and that, or yeah. do I just get a robot to drive my um uh, out the bam here yeah. and there? Like, what's is the, is there a discussion in the trucking industry about that? Well, yeah, it's been like that for a minute. So I'm a I'm AWS certified. That's like Amazon Web Services, right? Okay. So my my contract is with Amazon. So when I first came on with them, they were initially that man. You just you just kind of walk right over that. That's that's kind of major. I mean, it's not it's it's, big it's, name it's, man. I mean, it's all right, but like they 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 tell you like in the training and before that um. They're looking to, to like innovate, right? And so what their goal is, like right now, you order an Amazon package, mm-hmm. and they give you the option: do you want it tomorrow or do you want it the next day, right? And so mm-hmm. that's what you consider the Prime member or not, right? Mm-hmm. So now they're what they what they eventually want to do is they want to be able to stage products in certain areas. So you can say. Hey, I want my shit at three o'clock today. So you order at nine o'clock in the morning, yeah. and you can say you want it at one o'clock in the afternoon. So how are they going to do that with a person in the truck? That's a lot of dispatching, yeah. right? So what they're going to do is they're going to bring drones in, right? And we'll have drones, we'll have drones in staging areas, right? So every area, Halstead South, Halstead East, and they'll put these areas up everywhere. And the drones will come down and pick up your package and deliver it to your house if you're within five or ten miles of the drone area. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So that's eventually <coughs> what they want to get to. And so, of course, that'll automate a lot of things and take away a lot of the drivers. But I think we got some time before that shit happens. And then if, as that happens, shit, I'm yeah. gonna be the nigga that buy the drones, nigga. I'm gonna be the nigga. I'm gonna be the nigga that to try to get into the box game. I'm gonna be the nigga to be the security. Step ahead. Yeah, you just gotta be current, right? So if you you keep your into the street, just like anything else, you'll figure it out. And then you just kind of keep innovating, man, because everything don't stay the same. You know what I'm saying? No, not at all. I mean, that's the only thing that, that do stay the same is change. That's amazing that they got it out there like that. Yeah, that it's dude, coming, bro. It's coming. Yeah, that dude Bezos is a beast when it comes down to it, man. Yeah. And he stayed low and did his, did his thing for how long now, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, man, they, they, they had some good shit going on over there. But one of the biggest things that I credit... Uh, all those guys, I can't think of his name. I think it's Ray and then uh, Bezos, like all the motherfuckers. That mm-hmm. uh, the motherfucker who made the book Good to Great. You ever read the book Good to Great? I haven't. Man, read that book. It's called Good to Great. Hey, good pop that book. on the screen for me. You know what I'm saying? Good, good to Great's a good book. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it just kind of teach you. It's a culture, bro. So like, if you ever get a business and you employ anybody to do mm-hmm. anything, you understand that when you employ somebody to get money, you want them comfortable. You feel me? So mm. if they not comfortable doing what the fuck they doing, then why they gonna work hard for you? So mm. what they did was they went to Cali, nigga. They made a motherfucking. They made it comfortable for you. You feel mm. me? You want a job? Yeah, I want a job. Okay, we are gonna pay you seventy five thousand dollars a year. You want to come? How you want to come? Yeah. Are you LGBT? Yeah. Whatever they they don't give a fuck what you are. Right, you right. smoke weed? Yeah. You do cocaine? Yeah. We don't give a fuck. <laughs> right, Just right, come right. to work. Right. Just be here. Just be here. Now, look, we don't want you fucking doing cocaine in the back room. We don't want you smoking weed in publicly, but we're going to supply all the alcohol for you upstairs. We're gonna, you, like, you like video games? We're going to put a video game room okay. on the floor. You like, ref- you like food? We're going to put some food over there. They made it comfortable for them people. Mm. So you getting seventy five, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year. You coming you in Cali. You coming in that motherfucker stone doing what you want to do. Yeah. And you're a developer. You're, you answering the phone. You happy as shit. Yeah, yeah. So as you you know, that's a culture that they created, and a lot of companies are coming up with that culture. And most companies that choose that culture are successful. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So if you're running a business, treat your people well. Not saying let your people do drugs or anything like that, but treat them well and make them comfortable. If you make them comfortable, they will work for you. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And give them a success plan. You know, like just because they work for you right now, don't mean they're gonna work for you forever. So I got a driver, and I tell him all the time, bro. Man, if you want to go work for fucking DTI or fucking somewhere yeah. else, do that shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because this ain't going to last forever for you. I, I We, we want to grow, and I want to grow with you. But if you ever want to expand, do it, because that's what it's all about. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. Who were some of the people you were looking up to business-wise, Craig, or, or just... Birdie G? Perhaps, perhaps <laughs> outside of Birdie G, that was like... It, it, not necessarily role models to say, you know, somebody's bigger, better than you, but just somebody you was looking at like, oh, I can get I can get a decent amount of game off of this off of this individual. Well, you know, I soak up game from everybody, like like folks say, you know what I'm saying? Him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All the motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? But nobody really in general, like, cause I go off my own, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you got your own battery in your back. Yeah, you know, so I like the shit motherfuckers do. 
You know what I'm okay. saying? Okay. It motivates you, you know what I'm saying? Shit yeah. like that. That's what idolize now. Nah. Look up now. I mean, idolize might be too far, but I do want to grab them Gucci glasses you got. Yeah. I'm, gonna you, I'm gonna have to have you toss them in the garbage after you get Gucci. done. It can't be two of us out here like hey, that. Gucci. Hey, hey. I'm gonna put a little tape in the middle of mine just to put that hey. extra little flare on it, man. Feel me? <laughs> Gucci nerd out here, man. Hey, hey. So one question. So between you know, I, I did a little, I did a little research, and between here, just in general, and say out of Miami, because you spent some time in Florida. Yes, sir. What's the word on the strip clubs? Man. <laughs> strip clubs is just a different type of ball game. They better than these up here. These, this, this shit up here. I don't even go to these strip clubs. Wait, what's the difference? A lot. Look, hey, what? Big Joe, Big Joe. Uh, Craig ain't said but three a words lot. the whole time yeah. I said strip clubs. He done lit up a like lot, it's a night Joe. before Christmas. A lot. Yeah, a I lot. can tell you the fucking difference, man. <laughs> This is the difference right here. This, this, this is the difference right here. You gra- so this this your right. mo- this your money right. This your money right. You got to yeah. got your money right. This your money. So you in the strip club in Chicago, right? All right. So you go in the motherfucking strip club. You and that motherfucker, right? So the girls usually be dancing around doing their thing in Chicago. You pull out your wad. Now that motherfucker be a wad of hundreds. You know it's like about this fat. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it look kind of decent. But the chicks in fucking Chicago, nigga, as soon as you pull that wad out your pocket, nigga, they come in like roaches come for food out the night, nigga. They come all around your ass circling you. So as soon as you pull your money out, nigga, here come the girls. They gonna circle your ass like doo 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 And hey, look, and so you supposed to start doing this one, two, three, four. And the more you do that, the harder they shake for your ass, bro. That's Chicago. Now the way you get them motherfuckers to go, cause look. You gonna do all of like this, and yeah. if you know all your money away, then they just gonna walk away when you done. Okay, okay. So if you want to keep exactly. some of your money in the strip club in Chicago, you be like, dun, 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 dun. Um, and you be looking at them and shit, and you be like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> look around and shit, like look all the way, put your money in the pocket. <laughs> hey, look, they ass gonna go away like you turned the light on, nigga, in the kitchen. <laughs> They're going to run away from your ass like, okay, the nigga money gone. He ain't tipping no more. Uh, then you move over to another spot. Pull your money out of here. The then they do it again. You know what I'm saying? That's right Chicago. Now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Miami is not fucking like that, bro. Okay. Miami, I don't give a fuck who you are, nigga. You, know you, you pull your fucking money out like this, nigga. The girl's going to be walking past your ass like, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? You're like, damn, they ain't even speaking to me cuz I got... Like four bands on me, nigga. They ain't even speaking to me, nigga. Like, let me smack her ass or something. I smack her ass. They looking at me crazy, like, nigga. So I asked my cousin, and she like, man, what's going on, man? I brought the money. You told me to bring a lot of money. He said, man, you ain't throwing the motherfucking money, nigga. They don't give a fuck if you pull the money out and walk around with it. That ain't that ain't Miami, nigga. You got how much you got in your hand? I said four thousand. He said throw three. They'll be here. So, so oh, in Shot shit. Town, in Shot Town, your money oh, gonna last for a song and a half. All night. Miami. You can make your money last all night, Chicago. Miami, your shit gonna last for, for how long? For how long, long that motherfucker? Hell drop. yeah, nigga. By the time <laughs> it hit the ground, they gone, nigga. <laughs> gone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> gone. And the more you drop, the better your evening ends. You feel me? Ah, 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 ah. So, like, man, like, it's a different type of game. And then also in Chicago, like, you get that, you get yeah, the little yeah. twerking and shit. In Miami, nigga, you get motherfuckers swinging on the ceiling. It's like an acrobatic. Yeah, motherfuckers you know, jumping out the fucking man. room. Yeah, it's like the, uh, girls like bumping so booties so together so and so shit, so nigga. Yeah. You get a show. <laughs> so if you got four <laughs> bucks in your hand, you gonna drop uh, something, nigga, because yeah, you ain't yeah. never seen that shit before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? So yeah, yeah, it's different in Miami, and Chicago. Circus right? so late. Uh, what's your favorite? What's the favorite strip club you ever done been to, Craig? My favorite. Your first one? You Magic City. The, Magic City? Yeah. Is that in Miami? Mm-hmm. That's Atlanta. That should be That's Atlanta. Atlanta? Yeah, that should be in the yeah, I think it's still open, too. Yeah, that bitch still jumping. Two chains got that bitch now. Yeah, I think it's still open. Oh, what? But in Miami, it was a... Uh, it was a... Uh, uh, King of Diamonds was it. It was G4, wasn't it? it was yeah, G4. we went to G4. Yeah. We went to KOD. Yeah, KOD, G4. Man, one of the... 
man, they had some baddies down there, boy, doing that stripper shit. Man. They climb up a pole 200 feet in the air, man. And be Come down, that motherfucker pull the brakes. You got to give them a few dollars They for do that. a whole Olympic routine, and then after that, they come in and it's just conversation, and then you, you, you just go from there. Hey, these yeah, are because from there, from what I understand, <laughs> I ain't been to the ones in Atlanta or, uh, or Florida or nothing like that, but I understand, from my understanding, it's a whole experience. You ain't never got to leave. Like, they got the restaurant there. Like, they wing is supposed to be off the chain. Yeah. Like, conversation, they got barbers. That's in the A. Tattoo. Yeah, that's in the A. In the A, they got all that they shit. Got right. Dickheads. South, yeah. Well, I went to the one up here. It was yeah, uh, shit, these hoes had on Ugg boots and flip flops. Yeah, I was <laughs> in my <laughs> fucking. <laughs> we <laughs> remember what? Now you ain't go with uh, it. They got the uh, Missy Elliott too. It was my guy party. I was trying to get you to come up there. Uh, it was the one in uh Jimmy's. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. I mean, they got uh, Memphis and May. I went to Memphis and May a few years ago. They had girls dancing in the dirt. You know what I'm saying? I about to say, what's the most terrible one you've been to? That's it. Memphis. Memphis, Alabama, I like go to the Memphis. girls had on them little bathing suits and shit. They just had a pool stick for a ball. They, be, they built a stage like out of wood and shit, and then it was ground. <laughs> he said ground. The, walk, the <laughs> girls dancing barefoot and shit. <laughs> wait, they didn't have on shoes. They just had on cute outfits <laughs> and barefoot. No slide. Hell no, nah, they barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty ass, black ass feet when they, they swing on the pole. Mm. I was like, damn, this is bad. But it was That's only like three dollars to get in oh, and shit. God damn. That's why you don't want to go down there. Yeah. Mm. I, lo- I love the South, though. I fuck with the South. All the South, I-, I fucking with it hard. I love it. Is that where you would end up um, if you wasn't... I don't know. Like, Florida, I know it's the South, yeah. but it doesn't really feel like the South to me. It just feels like Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's its, it's, its own place. I, I think South Beach is my... I love South Beach. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's my, that's my area, man. Shout out to Legendary Lux, my nigga South Beach, man. That's my area, man. Legendary Lux. Overseas, Legendary Lux. anywhere you've been, what was your favorite spot? Oh man, I would probably say right now my favorite spot overseas was probably Panama, you know what I'm saying? Or maybe Korea, you know what I'm saying? Like those are probably my favorite spots. It's just different cultures, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. It takes you away from all of this shit right here. You just like you not you forced to eat different food and forced to yeah. hear different languages and forced to adapt to the cars being on the other side of the yeah oh uh, yeah the, I mean the, the steering wheel being on the other side of the car so yeah I, I would think those places are my best. What about you? I probably say I went to school uh, high school in Japan, so that was yeah. like you know them 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 real that them was real dope. important Euro, years. Hiroshima, Hiroshima. Yeah, and they yeah. didn't have no no drinking age off base. Yeah, it was, you know, it was like that college, was dope. That was dope. High school, high school. Type, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. And then what's crazy, what's crazy is if you go over there, just being American makes you a borderline rock star. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Were you the only black? Nah, I mean, it was on, on base. You know how it yeah, is. Yeah, it's, few, it's few everybody, more, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. you rocking with your crew. But if you out there, like being black, there's a certain part of that. That was, that was here. That, that they're like, yo... But any part but of being American, American, yeah, being American, yeah, and there, black, and then and then it's like a breakdown. Yeah, yeah, it's like, tch. yeah, bro. There was one time it was me and, and, and a bunch of uh, my friends. We just hanging out by the fence, you yeah. know, the border fence for the base. Yeah, and then some Japanese, like two cars full of uh, Japanese people, like our age. They yeah. pull up, and they was like, "Oh, y'all cool? This and that." Had us hop the gate, get in with them. They took us out to like they play. They taking pictures with us. Like like we really, yeah, you know, yeah, like superstar. somebody yeah, just because yeah, sure. you know what I'm saying. Just that's roll up on the up. That's that American. We just kicking it in the backyard. Yeah, and yeah, shit, you get a baby. lot of love. Yeah, that's yeah, crazy, for sure. man. For sure. You took some of that back. Like when did you did you when you touched back down and you was back in the city? Were you like, all right, hey guys, it's bigger than than all for this. sure. For sure, I was. I, 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 I tried to educate a lot of my people like. Just to let them know, like the world was bigger than what we knew. But man, you can't take everybody everywhere. Mm-hmm. Even with a conversation, you can't. You know what I'm saying? You they have to experience it. So I think the pandemic helped a lot of guys because mm. the traveling rate went up when, when the pandemic hit, mm. and people start getting out of Chicago and start seeing places that they hadn't been before. Mm. I know at least in Chicago. I don't know a lot of other places, but I know some people who had never been anywhere. And now they like, I love going to Dallas. I love going to Atlanta. Yeah. I love going to Miami because they finally got a chance to move out. You know what I'm saying? And just get around. Um, circle back to something we were talking about earlier. Sure. Um, so you, you had your time when you was down. Now you're an ind- independent businessman. For sure. That trend, help out my listeners who might find themselves in that situation, have been in that situation, or stuck in the middle of perhaps those dark times. Yeah. The steps you took, Something important, some gain that that took you from that transition 
from Dr. Daylight. Yeah, man. Well, one of the biggest things that I, I press and I tell all my people, it's all about time management. You know what I'm okay. saying? You got 24 hours in a day. So, like, what you going to do with your day, bro? You feel me? Like, you sleep six, seven hours a day, right? That's yeah. cool. So, you got fucking 17, 18 hours a day. What you going to do, bro? You going to fuck off? Now, if you go to work for somebody else, that's eight more hours a day, seven, eight hours a day that you work for somebody. Yeah. So, you sleep six, seven. <laughs> now, you work eight. That's 15 hours. So, now you got nine yeah. hours left for yourself. Yeah. What you going to do, right? So, you can take an hour a day and put it into anything. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So... Anybody that find themselves saying that they can't do something, they just got to look at the time that they got and figure out what they're doing with that time. Mm. You figure out what you're doing with your time, then you can start applying that time into what you want to do. Mm. Uh, the biggest thing is figuring out what you want to do. You feel me? Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. A Get lot to of, the bottom of that. Man, right. so I think how you kind of unfold that shit, bro, is like you just got to go with yourself and what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is it about you that you do that you like that comes natural that it doesn't hurt you, you feel me, and, and you like to do it. And once you figure that out and come to grips with yourself with mm -hmm. that, then that's what you start to employ and explore, you know what I'm saying? I definitely think you're 100% you're correct on that. My one thing I would say to that, so I didn't start doing comedy until I was 30. For sure. And that happened, I was doing small time, like right. county, whatever, this, right. that, and the third for like a month and a half, two months, mm -hmm. right? And then somebody in there was like, bro, you funny. funny. Like, right. I do comedy, why don't you do comedy? For sure. But up from that point until then, I was always a com you know, a comic guy. Right. I was always the fun dude. I was always snapping jokes. Yeah, yeah. And then it took another person going, yo, why don't you, why yeah. don't you tell jokes for me to go, oh, it's been in my face this entire time. Right, right. But I never would have stumbled on it. You know what I mean? Um, no, I'm good. I got, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so on, your, on your journey, like, I mean, definitely what you're saying is right. Hey, figure out what it is that you love yeah, doing sure. this and stuff. But there's some, might be somebody who's ignorant to the fact, like I was. And me too, bro. Like, I went off, like, man, like, my life has went all around this comedy shit. Like, okay. I, 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 I was a class clown in high school. Okay. Right. Likewise. Like so, growing up, I was always considered the funny dude to make you laugh. I could always hold a crowd. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I've I've done some motivational speaking before. I'm a great writer, so I've written some mm. screenplays, right? And so my goal in my mind was when I start figuring it out, I'm like, okay, I'm a writer. I want to write screenplays, right? Mm. And I want to act, right? And so I start getting into the acting, and I, you know, I was able to get a role in the shy, and I did a little bit of the shy, and I've written some screenplays, and so in my mind, I'm like, that's what I want to do. But when I started talking to the agents and the talent and the people, and they was like, bro, you funny. And I had mm -hmm. been hearing that all my life, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, bro, you funny. Why don't you get on this comedy game yeah. and start evolving all of your other things because you really got something there? And I'm like, damn. I've been hearing that shit for years, mm -hmm. you know, and I've been treated that way for years from my right, people. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But I just never, never roll with it. And so that's one of the things like it goes to just breaking yourself down and figuring out like what you want to do exactly. and what you okay with. You know what I'm saying? Like if you okay with that shit, well, you you know, it's like do it, bro. Like don't, don't, don't walk away from who you are. And a lot of times we walk away from who we are because Sometimes we're not really ready to accept it. You know what I'm saying? So having an F on your record, there's, there's not a whole lot of opportunity. It takes away a certain number of opportunities. Yeah. But then you said, all right, I'm going to go into business for myself. Right. I'm going to own a fleet and I'm going to go out and get these contracts. Did that, did you stumble across that or was that a plan? No, nah, everything you got is calculated. Time, you're going to be reading, working out, and trying to figure out so what you're going to do, so, right? So I caught a, a huge drug case, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? I caught a huge drug case, and then when I got on my drug case, I, I uh, they gave me some time, and so I put in an appeal, because I did that myself. So that was a way for me, like, okay, mm -hmm. I understand how to process a plan. So now when I get out, fuck, I got to get an EIN number, right? How I do mm -hmm. that? Now when I get out, I got to get the bank account, right? I never had a bank account. Now when mm -hmm. I get out, I got to do this, right? So... I started learning different processes. And so the biggest thing that it is is figuring out what you want to do. And then when you're figuring it out, having somebody kind of guide you through the steps. Because a motherfucker don't know, bro. Like you could yeah. you could have all of these talents in your mind and all of this shit you want to do, but a motherfucker don't know how to do it. Like, well, how you get to that point? You feel mm. me? So you just once you get to that point where you can figure out that plan, then you just take them steps. You feel me? This motivational speaking, what's that look like? 
Man, that shit was dope, man. You know, so my mom a school teacher. Okay. And I come from like Johnny Coleman. Johnny Coleman, shout out to JCI. Johnny Coleman. JCI, shout out to school teachers. Yeah, out man. There. Johnny Coleman was like an influential pastor in the city of Chicago. You feel mm-hmm. me? So she was like one of the first black women to have a mega church. It was really influential in bringing a lot of black positive people to Chicago. You know what I'm saying? So like Les Brown is my godfather. Wow. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, I met Rosa Parks. You know what I'm saying? True wow. story. Like uh, wow. Barack Obama. Um, Jesse Jackson. I've been to Farrakhan House. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So having that instilled in me in an early age, it always helped me want to get back. You feel you feel me? So when my mom being a school teacher, she would always give me the opportunity to come in and talk to her kids. You've been to the joint, right? You mm-hmm. hurt somebody, right? You 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 sold drugs, right? You've done all of these things that my kids have done. So you're not doing those things anymore. How do you how can, can you help me? Help me talk mm. to these kids. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's kind of how the motivational speaker came on. Like, like it's and and that's I just kind of elevated to that because I felt like if I could touch one little shorty, then it it'll help. You know what I'm saying? Because I had some mentors, like like you said, like we were talking about earlier. They couldn't tell me shit. You know what I'm saying? Right, like right, they couldn't right. tell me shit. But I now that I think back on it, I remember a few people who kind of guided me and kept me on the right path, yeah. and I appreciate them now. So if I get 30 shorties in a room and I can tell them, hey, yeah, I hurt somebody before. That shit ain't cool. It don't feel right. Yeah, I did this before. Yeah, that shit ain't cool. It don't feel right. Then maybe one of them little dudes would be like, man, I remember bro. Bro, bro, bro was bro was on point with it. I, I, I feel him. You know what I'm saying? Maybe the other 29 don't. But if I can get that message out to somebody, then man, maybe it'll be a look, it'll be a look. I mean, what's crazy is that you're not gonna hear the success stories because what you prevent. Won't happen. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so right, you right. only go and hear yeah. the times that it doesn't necessarily it work. Right. Doesn't necessarily right, work. Right. Right. So I mean, a lot of the positive, there's always going to be good and bad, and yeah. so there always has to be evil to counteract the bad. For sure. And like I said, if you prevent something, it's never going to happen. So it's not going to be somebody saying, oh, "I didn't do such and such." So right. think we, it's just not going. It's, it's not, not going to be there. Right. For sure. You know what I mean? Right. That's powerful that you do that, bro. Yeah, let's get back to this clothing line, Craig. Yes, FDKZ. Yes, sir. Fuck them kids. Fuck who, them so kids. Who, who's coming up? You know what I'm Fuck, them Fuck them kids. Them kids. You know it's a saying? slogan <laughs> only. <laughs> it's not a way of life. It's not a way of life. We don't. We don't. <laughs> but it's fuck them kids. You know what I'm saying? And um, um, Killer Craig, no. Killer Craig can tell y'all the best. Yeah, what feel. part? Well, uh, that shit is, uh, that's in his blood. Give me an idea behind the machine and, and what part you play and, and, and start getting these folks uh, some, some idea on the game. Well, you know, this just a little something I came up with, you know what I'm saying? Because we all, we love our kids, you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't, go, don't get caught up with the fuck and the kid part, you know what I'm saying? It's just like reading and read comprehension. It say fuck them kids. It's a fuck certain kid. kid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Use we ain't context talking about moves. my kid. We ain't talking about your kid. Right, you know right, what I'm right. saying? It's 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 different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, so imagine this. You know how you would go to work, tell your kid, how that garbage took me out. Yeah. When I get back from work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you get home and got crib stank. <laughs> garbage got that motherfucker reeking, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you like, you wanna snap, but you don't wanna be petty. Right. So you like, all right, fuck it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You take the shit out, you know what I'm saying? And then later on that week, the Jordans come out. <laughs> Your son yeah. won it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Baby boy right, won right, it. Right. And you like, yeah, all right, I got you. We going to go stand in this line for three hours, fight yeah. these motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying, and get yeah, these yeah. shoes. But sure. I forgot you ain't take the fucking garbage out. Uh, God damn it. I got something for you. I got my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fuck them kids. You Fuck know what them what I'm kids. I ain't, you know, so it's not, and it's not about children, because children don't do that. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? This is about them grown motherfuckers in your crib, mm. in the basement. Them titty milk boys. Titty milk boys, uh, as folks call them. You know what I'm saying? Nah, we talking about that. Titty milk boys. And like, we on somebody's child. We talking right. about grown motherfuckers too. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Titty milk boy. A titty milk boy is a. But we got it going. You know what I'm saying? Website www.fdkz.com. Mm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people um, in the city, or especially outside the city, who only get in their Chicago news from 
rap videos and YouTube and YouTube right, right, and, right. and them crazy YouTube. We know what's going on in the hood. Right, 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 right. Right. Never been I got a YouTube channel. Uh, we we gonna leave all that time on the end, but right now, uh, this is a <laughs> rap podcast. I got you, guys. Hey, but um, all that, all that in in Inglewood, in in you know Ch- Chatham, um, in uh, uh back of the yards, all the fathers out there really playing their roles that just aren't getting spoken about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just different. You know what I'm saying? So it was never to to affect the kids. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like that, you know what I'm saying? It was just some shit we always said. And yeah, I was yeah. Just courageous to oh, put no, that shit that on the shirt. Oh, no, said every day on the stage. You know what I'm saying? Then motherfuckers don't realize. Like, what? like one of my friends one day, he, we was at my house, and I was like, uh, you going to get a shirt, G? And he was like, nah, G, I can't get no shirt. I love my kids. I can't. Ooh. I said, it ain't like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's different. And he was like, I understand that, but no. Nah. And I was like, all right, cool, folks. Don't, don't even worry about it. So we get to playing the game and shit, and he get on the phone and call his mama. He was like, uh, hey, ma, you through cooking? And she was like, no, nah, I ain't through cooking yet. So he was like, all right, damn, fuck. And he was like, now nah, I got to go goddamn it, buy me something to eat. Yeah. And then his kids was being watched by his mom. Uh, he was like, I ain't going to buy them nothing. I'm going to get me something to eat. And they just got to wait for her to cook. And I said, nigga, that's the fuck the kids. Man. Yeah, yeah. Fuck the kids. What you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. That's, that's the moment. Yeah, that's you know what I'm saying? Moment. Niggas don't even know when they talking about fuck that's their the kids. Moment, that's when I, you know what I'm saying? You don't even Straight know. Up. That's you know what I'm saying? Moment. So, that's the moment. It's a moment. You when know it know comes down to uh, uh, merchandise and apparel, hustle in general, um, what is your marketing strategy? Give my viewers the game. How are you getting this out there? Now, I know I see you out there at these shows promoting. I know you're saying it on the microphone, but what are your other avenues of attacking and, 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 and getting this, this product in people's hands? Right now, it's just, just the online store and physical hand-to-hand combat. You know what I'm saying? I'll be out on these streets. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Punching and, the streets. You know what I'm saying? Punch it down. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. But I want to get a store, but I don't think it's worth it. I got you. Mm. These, um, so doing your, um, because not only are you rocking out here in Chicago with your production, you also making connections. Well, you out in, like we was talking about earlier, you out in Florida. Yeah. You moving here and there. Yeah, for sure. Making those connections. How are you, how are you doing that? Just networking, man. You feel me? Like, Real people understand real people. You feel mm-hmm. me? So when I move, I move with real people, and I'm just out there trying to catch a vibe. You feel me? So when right. I'm in when I'm in Miami, I gotta connect. I run into real people. They set me up with mm-hmm. another connect, right? And so that that get me from Miami to Texas, from Texas to Arizona, and we just go around the world like that. The key is networking, but the principles of it. So even like after a show, like I have to put it in my head. All right, just because you did a show, you might have had a good show. Don't bounce immediately. Go out, meet the people you were just making laugh. Introduce yourself. Ask them where they're from. Do this. Try and get them on the. Try and get them on your gram. Try and get them support. Everything like that. Do you have a science behind it? You're just starting conversations because a lot of comics, or people in general, re- real do you know they're they're kind of introverts. So yeah, for what, sure, for sure. A lot of people do their shit and go home, bro. They yeah. don't even want to see nobody else. Yeah. But it, but what's your? It's all about. We we talked about it earlier. It's all about your plan. If your plan uh-huh. is to go in there and talk shit and go home, then that's what you want to do. I don't know how far that's going to get you. Maybe it'll get you far because you talk really good shit. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But my plan is to go out here and create a brand, right? Mm-hmm. For you to understand where I'm coming from. So anything else that I bring out and come to life, you're going to fuck with it. You feel me? And you're mm-hmm. going to know it's coming from somebody that's genuine. So I try to touch. I try to touch people. Everybody I fuck with, I try to touch them. You feel mm-hmm. me? With something. So when I'm out here networking, it's like, hey... I'm rocking with you, you know what I'm saying? So that introvert shit, like we all got it, you know what I'm saying? But okay. it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, if you want to grow it, that ain't the time for it. You feel me? So you gotta have that plan. I'm gonna be introvert when I get back home on the couch and smoke this mm. wood. But when I'm out here, I'm finna fuck with these people. Mm. I'm finna see who is who, what is what, and try to get myself on that market. You know what I'm saying? And that transition from normal conversation, hey, a little bit about who I am, who you is, and then starting to talk business. So you were saying that 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 you got a plan, you have a goal in mind. Yeah, and I, I asked this, I asked this to a lot of the people I have on the show. 
How does that look? Are you writing things down? Are you writing down sure. your goals? Do you have a vision board? I know a lot of sure. people think that's goofy, but like, what, what's the what's so the you look at my phone, bro? Thing? I got my vision board on my phone, bro. Oh, you thorough all the way you vision feel? board out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I write shit now. It's all about time management, bro. Mm. If you don't know where the basket at, what the fuck you shooting at? Uh, you feel me? Right. So like, if you don't like it, it, it sounds corny to a lot of people, but maybe you could remember it in your head. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you could. Have an action item and then do it right there. You don't have to write it down. I smoke a mm. lot of weed. I got a whole lot of things going on. So I got to plan it. You feel mm. me? So I got a goal. It's an end goal. This is what I want to do. And I got ways to get to that goal. You feel and me? are you having conversations with yourself? Or do you have like a mantra, something you tell yourself all the time? Even you, Craig, feel free uh, to chime in. I mean, I'm just a hustler, bro. I just go yeah. get it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Every morning I get up, I know I got another day. You got to be better than yesterday. You hear me? You know mm. what I'm saying? So if you ain't better than yesterday, if you ain't on that, you don't want to be better than yesterday, then you might as well sit at home. So some days better than other days. Some days we don't yeah. want to do shit, but you got to understand those that. Those are the days that's most important. Right. I mean, but you got to understand that if you're going to have those days, you got to have a lot more days of when you're going to get it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's okay to be introverted and not come out or feel like you got to work on yourself internally to, in order to get your mind right. We all go through yeah. that. But then you also, if you do that for three weeks, then for 14 weeks, you got to go hard. Go hard. You know what I'm saying? Because you just sat back for three weeks, right? Mm. So you got to have a plan. If you don't got no plan, you don't got shit. Straight it down. Now, Craig, um, I've been out in, in the city for about 10 years now, right? Most of that time I've been on the low end between 51st Champlain area, now I'm off of 47th, like Michigan area, right? And I done seen it all out here, right? So you growing up in Inglewood, you seeing it all to the max, right? There's a lot of talk these days about mental health, and I know in the community, as far as I can see, that's still that's still like a taboo kind yeah, of subject. Problem. Don't nobody want to talk about yeah, like yeah. traumas or yeah. getting over like mental instability. A lot of people would just so go pop yeah. of this, yeah. go sip of that, go smoke of this and that, woo out the bam, and then, you know, just drown that pain out until it come out in, in another, because it don't go nowhere, it just yeah, come out yeah, in a different yeah, area. Yeah. No, they need some programs for these kids, really, because mm. it's hard out here for them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, they ain't got nothing to reach for. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, they look at rap music and TV mm. type, you know what I'm saying? So it's like nothing for them to strive for. When we was coming up, we had little rec centers and stuff like that that we could uh, go to. Ah, yeah. You don't even have that no more. Yeah, you know yeah. What I'm like the kids are. It's, it's like, Grand Theft Auto out here, boy. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. That's, and that's the the consequence of what they did. The kids sat in front of Grand Theft Auto for like twenty years. Now that shit real. So for real, because I remember coming up, they would talk about like the video games is influencing this, yeah, that, and the yeah. third, and so that's real. You yeah. ever played Grand Theft Auto? I played it yeah back in the day, not the new one that you could really All live your same. whole life in there. Man, Everybody you crazy. can go in the car, take the car, beat somebody up. That's how this shit is in the world. That's man. how it is. Mm. And you wonder why, and you would sit back because that's what they did. The kids just sat in front of the game. Well, the oh, other, well, the earlier generation was focused on sports. They played video yeah, games, yeah, like yeah. sport video games, or when yeah. outside play video games. So now they kind of heavily into sports, or they kind of follow sports. Now shit. you can just be a whole kingpin. Now you just like guns. I like guns and fast, and fast cars. cars right. <laughs> right, right. Girls don't even smacking no somebody in the face. You don't even see girls jumping road on kids on the street no more. I ain't seen the double dutch. You know what I'm saying? Since. You don't see that no more. Nineteen times. Kids don't play hide and seek and all that mm, bullshit. No more. So if it isn't coming out in a uh, in a Dirk Yo or G Herbo lyric, then yeah. cats ain't really yeah. gonna go seek yeah. like mental. Yeah. They don't believe none it. of that. They don't believe it. Do you have any coping mechanisms? Anything that helps you? Uh, uh, do you talk to anybody, or you it's just weed. focus on something else? <laughs> Who your weed. counselor, fool? It's yeah, weed. Yeah, yeah. Who your it's weed. Uh, <laughs> the weed. The weed. Yeah. The weed. And then just relaxation and focusing yeah, on this. Back, I think mental health real though. I think that shit real. Like motherfuckers really suffer from that shit. Like, but then what? But what do you do though? Like, how do you? What do you do? Do you set up like a mental health school? Like, well, how do you? How do you fix it? That is an. That's I don't, a good I, ass. You know question, what I'm saying? Man. Motherfuckers like everybody suffer from it, but like, do you send a motherfucker to like a mental health school? Like. Class like DUI or some shit. Like yeah, that. You talk about I don't Cause know, in your bro. mind, like if if you mentally unstable, it you only trapped in your own head, so it probably seemed normal to you. Also, you too, talk. I don't. I think uh, I think mental talk. illness comes in. I don't know if everybody experiences it all the time, but I think some people may not experience it as often as others. So maybe six months out of the year, you are having some really really bad times. Mm. 
and then six months out of the year you're not. You know what I'm saying? So what if you could get some help during that time? Why are you saying that? I was on the 47 green line once upon a time. Bro got down, sat sat behind me about two chairs. He was he was about three hundred and twenty pounds, <laughs> four year old in the mind though, right? Yeah. Oh damn! And we sitting there. He just had that look on him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That smile. That like yeah. you know, ain't nobody said nothing funny. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's sitting there quiet the whole time while we on on like fifty first stop. Yeah. As soon as we got downtown, as a matter of fact, as soon as we got to Cermak, <laughs> and about. Seven, eight people got on the on the thing. He started Acting going. Fool, yeah. he started go. I said, "How are you part time?" Yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. How you decide to clock in you on crazy? Get, you should have got it. You should have brought him to the show. You should have brought him to the show. You should have brought him to the show. You supposed to be talking like Teletubbies from Jump Street. Right. <laughs> you should have brought him to the show. Get here. And now all of a sudden you Squidward. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I, I mean, some people probably go through that. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. who knows, bro? But it's definitely it's definitely real. Yeah, thousand percent, man. Definitely real. The damn um so focused on 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 business in the in the future. I wanna hear what is the ultimate goal. So you're producing comedy shows now and you was talking about doing movies and this and that. Is that where it's at? matter of fact, hold on, let's get off of that real quick, cause this is this just happened. Uh oh. If you was in Bro's camp, why is the did, did the baby just just allegedly pop somebody off and then allegedly like sock somebody in the face? Like yeah, if you win this camp, like name. bro, is you really I've trying to fuck shit. the bag? Oh, I, I, I yeah, right. I, I sent it on the gram, but I ain't really. I just sent I found somebody. I look, I ain't here to talk about what nobody allegedly is accused of, yeah. associated I with. Folks got a temper. He just got. Is a that temper, what it bro. is? Yeah, he got it's got to be. Yeah. You know because he's been taking it all the way to the max, and when you do that, you want to talk about mental instability. I mean, that's got to that's got to change you to a degree. Well, that's what we talked about. It's emotions, right? Mm, Everything is yeah. driven on emotions. You know what I'm saying? And so, family members, ain't, you know, his family members. So if if you got some up. shit going on your in your mind, your emotions might be a little more pressed than what they normally were. You feel me? Because mm. you 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 going through something. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So. He might be going through something and, and make him react a little different, but that's but, that gift and the curse too. Because when people say it's not always about the money, you could have however many millions, and then on the inside it's dark. You know but, what I mean? But whole time he ain't do that for nothing. He just walked past do do that. Yeah, shit. I don't know no background on any you know kind man? of allegations. Yeah, me I don't know he about had to say shit. something to him or rub him the wrong way for him to do what he did. Because that shit was crazy. That mm. nigga did some shit. He walked up to him. I ain't really see it. I just seen to a hit. But I know the baby known for fucking motherfuckers up. Yeah, he had to fuck with him. Hey, <laughs> hey, you could be known for that, but you don't have to be videotaped for that. Yeah. Well, everybody got videotaped. Everybody, yeah. Camera. Shit, they wanted clicks. What did camera phones do to the game in general? Same thing calculators did, motherfucker. What the fuck? Made it easy. What the fuck? Made it easy. Made it easy. Made it easy. Made it easy. <laughs> Cats is hey. using it. You still using your fingers, stupid? Ma- man, motherfucker, t- what the teacher tell you when you was taking them tests when you was a shorty? They, hey, put, they no put the calculator app yeah. in. You're yeah. not going to have one in the real world. What happened? What happened? That Bitch, one, I got one in my hand. Every that day. one L7 nigga had the calculator on his, on his yeah. watch. But like, now you got a phone in class? Like, how? Yeah. how yeah. You got a phone and you at home on a computer. That's what I'm saying. The phone is a fucking program anyway. You can do all type of shit on that. But then you got the you got you got a calculator. You know what I'm saying? So the calculator is just like the camera. Mm. Nigga, you ain't had no care. Back in the day, when I was a shorty growing up, nigga, it was one motherfucker and a five. And if you had a family of five uncles and two aunties, one motherfucker had a camera. Mm. I'm from the hood. You know what yeah. I'm saying? One motherfucker had a camera. And it was the, that the, big, the big one, like you shooting a whole, like you shooting yeah, Godfather 5. Yeah, motherfucker didn't have no cameras, bro. Mm-hmm. Or you, your mama took you to Sears or Kmart or some motherfucker yeah. want to take pictures and y'all got them bitches copied yeah. at Walmart. Oh, the Walgreens. Yeah, one, oh, then, uh, then later on in life, the man started walking around the club with the roses and taking pictures because he yeah, had yeah. the pictures to come out. Right, right, the Polaroid. Now, nah, motherfucker got a And if one of your boy. eyes was halfway shut... And you had a booger in your nose, you just had to eat that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want, like, you want, you want no at, take 28 pictures. Want, yeah. That was $10, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no motherfucking three takes, nigga. No pictures <laughs> are $10. <laughs> hey, speaking of FKDZ, what did that it's two FDKZ. years... It's FDKZ. FDKZ, my F-K-D-Z. bad. What did that two years off the... um? What did that two years at home on the computer do to these kids that was in school? Uh, Run up internet bills. <laughs> Fuck their ass up. You seen a lot. 
Mm. Uh, Mom was walking past naked and shit. You see that picture with dude was on uh, the Zooms? On school, <laughs> Zoom. Shorty, yeah, yeah short, shorty, no matter how parties on Zooms and shit. Oh, so, yeah. I got all that shit though. What's that? You was the one walking by naked? I got abbreviations with this shit. You know what I'm saying? Got fuck them kids and they daddy. The Zoom boom podcast. You know fuck them kids and they mama. <laughs> fuck them kids <laughs> and e learning. You know what I'm saying? That was a gimmick. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody hated e learning. That was some bullshit though. You nah, know what I'm saying? Stop, bro. They had you how these kids? For, how these kids fail in e learning, bro? Right. You learn to feel like uh, the um, it feel like having a substitute teacher. I got a every niece day. like that, man. She dumb as hell. She fell all after she won't go to school from home. <laughs> she I can cut the computer that. home. <laughs> you need to you need to get her mama one of them shirts. My son did that blue shirt. How the fuck did you, you go to school from home? Mm-hmm. She said, "I got she got like no, nah, she ain't get all F. She got like C's, D's, and F's." <laughs> How you get that? All you gotta do is just turn the computer on. She like, yeah, but I be falling asleep. Falling asleep. You can cheat on the computer that you want. I'll be like, you know what? Don't let I don't want to go all again. Just give me my calculator. <laughs> let me take my I test. had a home alone uh uh Michael Jordan thing sitting in my chair just looking like me. Yeah. <laughs> I you know what I'm something. Up. something. Heck yeah, no, man. Hey, so let's do it. Uh we at that part right now. We're gonna go ahead and get out. So you got the merch. And you got the YouTube channel. Go ahead, do me a favor, Craig. Let these people know um, how they can find you on the gram, where they can find the merch, and, and promote your show. Oh well, I got a show on podcast. Uh, not podcast. I do mukbangs on YouTube. It's a uh, killer killer, K I L L A K I L L A. My name on Facebook is Craig Kanye. Crazy Craig. <laughs> and all that crazy. shit real. Crazy, you know crazy. Instagram. Crazy Craig. It's a official FDKZ collection. You know what I'm saying? You can contact me on that. Other than that. Just we out see. here. We out That's here. what it is. And my man, Birdie. Birdie G, man. You catch Birdie, Birdie G, G. Let them know where they can find you at. Birdie G, Instagram. Birdie G, 027. You feel me? I'm all over the world. I can fly. <laughs> so just catch me on the ground. <laughs> catch me on the ground. Fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? We got some big shit coming, man. Some big productions coming. So I'm doing a stand-up comedy as well. Yeah. I'm doing a production of the shows, you know. Hopefully this screenplay pick up so we can get something off of that. Don't even you know say hopefully. Just say when the screenplay pick right. up. When it pick up. Right. You feel me? Right. Like, man, right. you feel me? So everything is going good, man. So just follow me. Fuck with me. We out here. Yeah. And in the tradition like of the Real Rap Podcast, some guys came through talking about their merch. Didn't have... Any merch for me? Um, no, we got to play. We got, nah, we, that's we got, what it is. We no, we got merch for you. That's, that's why I called it out on the show. No, no, we got merch for you. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. FDKZ clothing. Yeah, man. Some, man. Some, Remember some, that. We got some mediums for you. FDKZ.com. Mediums. Some mediums for you. Hey, man, once again, it's Mike Knight on the Real Rap Podcast. Hey, man, once again, it's Mike Knight on the Real Rap Podcast. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Um, it's Mike Knight Comedy on all the things. It's been a Real Rap Podcast. These are my guys, man. Make sure that you follow us. My guy, Killer Craig. Make sure you follow him. Birdie G, the one and only. Real man. rap podcast. Real rap we podcast. We love you. Peace. For sure. Kids, baby. Mike, 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 you. Great from the south side. Mike, 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 you. Uh, I'm just so happy to be here right now. Real rap podcast. 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 podcast.